On the wards above, newborn babies are just beginning life as down below a taxi arrives about to threaten death. The explosion kills the passenger, but miraculously not his driver. You see him escape the car and the flames that quickly engulf it. He watches on as mercifully whatever threat was intended here does not reach anyone beyond the back seat. I turned into the car park and I just saw a big plume of smoke and a car on fire. And I just thought, what the hell's going on? And your wife was just yards away in there. She was ab about 40 feet away. I mean, a newborn baby you know, had heart in my throat. This morning, police confirmed what was witnessed was an act of terrorism. Our inquiries indicate that an improvised explosive device has been manufactured and our assumption so far is that it was built by the passenger in the taxi. The reason why he then took it to the women's hospital is unknown, as is the reason for its sudden explosion. Given all the circumstances, it has been declared a terrorist incident. And the man closest to it was taxi driver David Perry, a husband, a father and a football player for his local team. He's now at home with only minor injuries, where today his wife thanked the emergency services, saying he's doing OK but is extremely sore and just trying to process what's happened. He is without doubt lucky to be alive. How he managed to escape is an utter miracle. David Perry had collected his passenger at around 10.50 yesterday morning on Rutland Avenue. At 10.59, just before the nation paused for silence on Remembrance Sunday, the taxi exploded as it pulled into Liverpool Women's Hospital. With the main suspect dead, in the following hours police arrested three men they describe as his associates on Sutcliffe Street, a short drive away. There, we obtained these videos of armed police bringing out a suspect in a backyard. And today, a fourth arrest was made on the same road. Tonight, this is the man they're being questioned in connection with. Police have named the passenger as 32-year-old Imad al Swalmin. We understand he was an asylum seeker from Syria who'd lived for a while with this Christian couple in Liverpool, converting to their faith. Do you have any idea why he would have done what he did yesterday? I've no idea at all. I mean, he lived here for eight months and we were living cheek by jowl. He was, um, I thought at that time, certainly very genuine. One thing I suppose to be thankful for, that he didn't kill anyone else. But it's sad. It's been a real shock mm. to you. Yeah. Very much. The couple believe Al Swalmin had a history of poor mental health. He had been involved in an incident in, in the centre of town which involved a bridge and a knife. As a result of that he was sectioned and I believe he spent about six months in a, a mental institution of some sort. He'd also lived on this road on Rutland Avenue where it's suspected a bomb may have been made. Today a controlled explosion was carried out nearby as the Prime Minister condemned what he called a sickening attack, which has raised the terror threat substantially. The Independent Joint Terrorism Analysis Centre, JTAC, are today raising the UK's threat level from substantial to severe, meaning an attack is highly likely. As the nation remains on high alert tonight, at least the suspect in this attack only succeeded in being a threat to himself. Paul Brandt, News at 10. Liverpool.